Right, so Jayalalita stands disqualified as an MLA because of her conviction and the four-year sentence of imprisonment. And joining me live right now, uh, good morning from New York and good evening to all of you there. Vivek Narayan, our, uh, our senior editor, joins us there in our studios there in Mumbai. Sabha, I can see you there, political editor of The Outlook. Uh, Aryaman Sundaram, senior lawyer at the Supreme Court. Nirja Chaudhary, senior journalist, thank you very much. Mr. D. Raja of the Communist Party of India, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Sambit Patra, I think, is also with us, though I'm not seeing him on the screen yet. And I think we have P.S. Raman, former Advocate General of the Madras High Court. Thank you very much, Mr. Raman. Good, good morning from New York. I hope you can all hear me loud and clear, and good evening to all of you. Joining me from different locations across India. Ariman Sundaram, what are Jayalalitha's options now? What are legal options? Her legal option is only one, and that's to file an appeal. There is uh, a provision under which she can seek stay of her conviction. And uh, in that case, uh, she would be entitled to hold office. But with the latest pronouncement of the Supreme Court, the moment she has been found guilty and convicted and has been sentenced to four years, uh, she has to demit office unless she gets the stay Im immediately. So I think her option is only one, go by way of stay. And I'm not talking about a political option, but I'm talking about this. But Adnab, I do is want to point Is she likely to get the stay, Mr. This. Raman? And that... Is she likely to get the stay, Mr. Raman? What's your view? Um, Arnab. Um, Arnab, uh, the issue of uh, granting a stay of conviction is a really debatable one because uh, one will really have to see the kind of evidence which has been presented before the trial court and how well the trial court has analyzed it. The chances of getting a stay of a conviction are rare. Uh, very recently, one MP got a stay of a conviction only because he was involved in a motor accident case. But uh, in a Prevention of Our Corruption Act case, particularly where it involves disproportionate assets, it mm. will be tough, but it can never be ruled out. As Arima says, that is the legal option for her. Particularly now with the Lily Thomas judgment of the Supreme Court, uh, the one reprieve yes, I mean, which uh, sitting also... members of Parliament and Assembly members had. Hmm. Yeah that uh, Section 8.4 was declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court, which uh, gave them a reprieve right. by allowing them yeah, to go No, no, I just wanted uh, Mr. Ariman Sundaram to complete. Office. He was making one point. No, also, I guess, anymore. Mr. Sundaram, the fact is that this has been a very prolonged yeah. trial. It's, it's seen five judges uh, exactly. over, the, over, the, over the course of exactly. 18 years. So I guess all the evidence has also been looked at in detail, not by one judge, but by many. It must have gone through many iterations. Arnab, as much of a jolt as it may be for Madam Jayalalitha and the uh, ADMK party and the political world at large, I think it's an equal jolt for uh, many lawyers and uh, many people in this profession because what we're really seeing is this. Let's just look at the issue. It's an 18-year-old case and 18 years later, a trial which you can only fault. I mean, I know every accused tries to delay a trial, but it's in the hands of the court to permit it or not. And so I have to lay the blame at court's door to say this trial is protracted for 18 years. Now I ask myself a question. If 18 years ago she has done something which has rendered her guilty and unfit to hold office, she has been holding office for 18 years after that. She has become chief minister twice after that. Now what we are talking about is not an offence committee today which requires her not to be chief minister but something which was done 18 years ago. And it's only because of law's delay that she was allowed to continue for that long. And please see the anomaly of it. 18 years ago, if law had acted immediately, people would have also supported such a conviction. Today, you are having outrage in the state of Tamil Nadu because she's at an all-time popularity and this particular chief ministership of hers has shown her doing a lot of welfare schemes. People are very happy with her. People are unwilling to believe that she's a corrupt person. And in fact, today, her image is very good. But what she's being sentenced for is what she did 18 years ago. And only if she had been sentenced for it 18 years ago, she would not get the sympathy she's getting today. And for having been convicted, let me tell you, it's going to get a huge sympathy wave in her favor. And I lay the blame completely at court's door.
Well, that's that's the point I wanted to pick up now. I, uh, with, uh, with, with, let's go across to Nirja first. Nirja, what do you think? Is she, be, is she going to be able to twist it to her advantage, this whole uh, the conviction here right now, especially because this has come so late? Since 1996, this case has seen five judges come and go. Many points of view, the case being transferred to Bangalore in 2003. So, you know, Aryaman Sundaran's argument today is that the passage of time, uh, you know, goes in Jayalalita's favor. Would you agree? <coughs> I think that's true. I would tend to agree there that she's likely to get the sympathy. She also has the skill to turn things to her advantage. <coughs> if you remember her first uh, CM ship, that election she fought in 91, the way she was manhandled by the DMK legislators in the assembly in 89, she used to her advantage so totally projecting herself as a Draupadi and Karuna Nidhi as Duryodhan and that she won that election and became the chief minister for the first time. This time also we mustn't forget in the last Lok Sabha elections just, that we've just seen, 37 seats she got, 7 less than the grand old party of India, the Congress, a national party, 129 year old party. And that showed the kind of popularity she had. Her fortress could not be breached by the Modi wave at all. So she's not only a tough uh, leader, today she has popularity and somebody referred to this, you know, the Amma kitchens, the Amma idlis, the Amma pharma, the Amma water, you know, she's reaching out to the poor people and uh, anti-incumbency hasn't set in. So I think given that, but you see where her challenge will come, she will neither be the head of the party in the assembly, she will neither be the head of the government and some other people will have to take that leadership role and she may not also be able to uh, uh, contest the election in 2016 so it will have to be her proxies now will she be able to maintain that kind of sympathy that kind of momentum you know and, and, and that I, is think, the question. I think she, i think you make a very very strong point there you i think you make a very strong strong and appropriate point there nirja and, and I would tend to agree with you as I throw across to D. Raja because, because if you look at all the judgments in the previous cases, Mr. Raja, involving Jayalalita, you know, the, she's been eventually proven right. There were 14 cases and had, uh, 14 cases which were filed against her when the DMK was in power. And the fact is that she was acquitted in several of them. And though she has therefore been convicted and sentenced, I don't know if the, if the DMK really can cry victory given their notorious history vis-a-vis -vis Jayalalita and all the previous judgments in other cases mean perhaps that Jayalalita still has hope. I mean, each case is of course different, Mr. Raja. But, but if you just look at precedent, I wouldn't rule out the possibility of Jayalalita still having significant hope in coming out strong from this one as well. Definitely, she has a legal course available before her. She can uh, appeal for uh, uh, bail on, uh, against her uh, conviction and stay uh, of her conviction and uh, she can bounce back also. But right now, she has to step down. She must have stepped down by this time and uh, they will have to elect a new leader there will be a new government headed by a new person but I find there is no threat to the ADMK government in the state of Tamil Nadu. They have absolute majority in the state assembly and uh, I do not find anything uh, which can cause political instability in the country but the law and order situation has become a matter of concern. DMK may play on that issue. That is what the ADMK cadets, leaders must Would she be want to precipitate that? Would she not want to be cautious about, about the law and order situation getting worse, uh, Sabha? Would she, not, would she not want to be very cautious that, that's after what all? I, I it's think a question of her own image and her own appeal. Yeah. Which is yeah, which is at stake, Sabha. She, you know, we uh, are uh, concerned today about... The law and order situation... What? That's what I think. No, no, the law and order situation uh, will will be bad because, first of all, Arnab, let me say one thing. No. I'm a great admirer of the personality of Jayalalita. Here is a woman. I mean, when you look at the facts of the of the corruption case, 
it is such humongous kind of corruption like Imelda Marcos of Philippines right on the one hand you have that and look at what she has evolved into a woman she uh, when MGR passed away his wife uh, fought with uh, Jayalalitha Jayalalitha surmounted that process so she is a spectacular personality a spectacular woman on the public stage and this time round I had the fortune of actually going to Tamil Nadu during the general elections and she was so popular and uh, you know we keep talking about throwing money at welfare schemes she was making under her government things were working in Tamil Nadu and there was and all the other parties were reduced to nothing there was a small growth for the BJP and uh, you know corruption at this time when the DMK has had such staggering corruption during the 10 years of UPA uh, U, U, the, la, the last government so uh, you know I, I feel that uh, Jayalalitha will get sympathy but if she is physically in jail and uh, you know there is really no hierarchy in that party there is no one who can replace her how will she be able to do it hmm. uh, two years from now when the assembly elections go on? You know, to put a rubbery kind of person there is not the same as being there yourself. Number two, there is an intriguing possibility. This is just in the realm of ideas. What if the BJP, which really doesn't have a no, chance, you see, this leadership Jai is Lata, very poor in Tamil Nadu. Is a very what if they individual. someone like Rajini Khan? Those, those no, no, of what us. If? I'm look no, you know... Those of us who followed Jayalalitha and what, covered what, what, her and, and reported on her politics, Sabha, and you have more experience in this context, you and Nirja, than I have. But, but all of those who, yes. those who followed her know her as an extremely mm -hmm. steely kind of individual. I mean, and, and though she's been convicted now, just to want to add a little bit of perspective with Vivek Narayan, who can throw in on that. Uh, because though she's been convicted now, Vivek, Jayalalitha had been arrested over the Color TV scam case when the DMK government was in power, right? And after her release then, I think it was 1997, I think, yes, she had vowed to teach a lesson to those who arrested her, right? And, and in 2001, after she became chief minister, Karunanidhi was arrested ostensibly over a scam related to the construction of flyovers in Tamil Nadu. And, and you know, I, I remember she had said when she came out, I think it was 31st of January 1997, when she said, I will try, I will teach a lesson to all those who sent me to jail and tried to destroy my party. So today the argument is not about whether the case against her is legally solid or not. The argument against is about the history of the case, when it was filed and whether it was filed itself, whether the vigilance department acted in a, in a sort of a filed the cases against her and Sasikala and others as an act of vengeance. I think she's going to focus on that. How do you see this playing out? By the way, to all our viewers, I just want to get a quick update uh, right now as I wait for Vivek Narayan to respond to that. I think we are about, I don't have the ticker there on the screen for me, but I think... I think it's about uh, about half an hour from now that Narendra Modi shall be speaking at the UNGA. Yes, Vivek. Yes, well, Vivek. Uh, or no, anyone who's watched uh, Jayalalitha work closely knows that she is a person who plans everything meticulously. I'm sure she's planned A, plan B, everything is in place. She would have factored all the things which have happened today very well in advance. First thing she had stole her carders, her mid-level, senior level uh, workers and also uh, the administrators in Tamil Nadu is to ensure that there is no violence. Remember, Ornab, one black mark on uh, Jalalita at that point was when AIDMK workers went on a rampage uh, when there was a lower court ruling against her in which uh, four students of a college who were on a school college picnic were burned to death in Dharmapuri. She has made yeah, sure that, that message has gone down very strongly uh, down the line to the workers, to the administrators, that no violence should be precipitated. And that's precisely why that when we are speaking right now, uh, the officials of her administration are speaking with the governor, uh, Rosaya, right now, making sure that uh, everything is in place, that law and order situations do not arise. They heard, we are also hearing from uh, sources on ground uh, that uh, AIDMK leadership has sought time from the governor tomorrow, perhaps. You know, the legislators might go to 
to the governor tomorrow and uh, tell him uh, who their elected representative is, who is their choice for the chief minister's post. Could well be Opanir Selvam. For all we know, we, he's kind of become a uh, synonym for loyalty, uh, so to say. He's been there before, done that before. Or Jalalita could pick a complete outsider. Well, all these things apart, it's very clear that whoever comes in uh, to power, whoever is the chosen one, Jalalita will be firmly in the driver's seat. And irrespective of the fact whether she attends the legislative party, irrespective of the fact that uh, she's not on the chief minister's uh, chair, she will have a firm grip over what is going on a day-to-day -day basis and she will make sure whatever was uh, promised uh, uh, will be delivered or no. Right, that, that's very interesting. I, I'm told right now that, you know, at the UNJ, yes, Mr. Raman, yes, Mr. Raman, go ahead. Yes, Mr. Raja, go ahead. I just want to update yeah, our viewers like to, yeah, uh, that, you know, I've, my latest update from here yeah, in New York is that I've there's one more, one now. speaker who's speaking now and after that Narendra Modi comes yeah. on. So we are about a few minutes from Narendra Modi's speech. Yes, Mr. Yeah. Raman. I just, yeah, I just... I just need a minute. I wanted to say that I, I agree with uh, Arima about the 18-year delay, but uh, we have to understand that uh, in this particular trial, it has gone through several judges. It has been transferred from Tamil Nadu to Karnataka. And for several years, the trial was stayed, both by the High Court and thereafter by the Supreme Court as well on some technical issue or the other. So one really should not put the number of years of the trial as a point uh, to support the accused in a matter of this nature. Having said that, I'd like to say that no, uh, this is not a political victory or a defeat for anybody. We should treat this as any other case and a rule of law has to go through and uh, the law requires that a person who has been convicted under the Prevention of Corruption Act will stay back. She's a politician, so her assiduousness will uh, no, no bounds. So if she can take advantage of it, so be it. But the law should continue in motion. And I don't think a 18 year or a 10 year or a five year delay should warrant any uh, reduction in the kind of uh, yeah. conviction or otherwise which should, sentencing which should take place in yeah. matters of this here nature. For a moment. I have to clarify can we? something. May I just come in here with a clarification? I do not think yeah, yeah. the delay... Uh, Mr. Raman, Ariman Sundaram wanted to make a point. And by the way, we had a few minutes from Modi speaking, so I'm going to get yeah. a fresh update. Yeah. I was just, I just told the order just, of speakers yeah, yeah. has been shuffled a bit. In so we may be about 10, 15 minutes away from Modi's speech. I, I'm just putting our viewers up to date because many people are joining us right now to know when we yeah. are going to cut across yeah. that speech. Yes, we're staying on both these stories. The developments in Bangalore we're talking about right now and soon we'll be going across to the UN. Yes, please. Ariman Sundaram. Yes, let me make one thing very clear. There is absolutely no doubt that if an offence has been committed and an offence is then being tried and then you're, uh, you're sentenced, you shall suffer the consequence. There's no doubt about that. The 18 years I was talking about is a very, very uh, pointed issue that if a person, if the aim of the Representation of People's Act as has now been interpreted by the Supreme Court striking down 8-4 is that the moment a person is convicted they ought not to continue. Why is it said they ought not to continue for a minute more? Because the nature of the offence that they have committed does not warrant their continuance. My point is if this offence was committed 18 years ago and the nature of the offence is such that it does not warrant continuance because of laws delays wherever you put it whether it's stay orders or not don't forget even the stay orders are given by courts. I am saying if there was a law's delay of 18 years and your aim is that the moment a serious offence is committed, a person shouldn't continue. Law's delays have allowed a person, have allowed a person to continue for 18 years in public office. When the whole object is, the moment you commit such, an, uh, That's such right. a serious offence and are found to have, you should stop. In which yeah. case we have to have a fast track court. In these matters, it has to be a trial within a year at the most. Because you cannot allow, uh, if after 18 years you say, my God, the offence committed was such, she should not have been a minister at all. Don't forget that for 18 years she's been chief minister twice. How, you can't wipe out those 18 years. That's why I'm saying laws delays are terrible in a situation like this. We need a very fast track court in the case of corruption matters. You know, Arnab, if I may come in.
No, certainly we do, Mr. Su Mr. Mr. Sundaram, but that's a long-term thing. It's not. It's not going to happen overnight. Sabha wants to come back to the debate. I'm trying to get an update from, uh, from the UNG as soon as we can. I'm going to go across to Maru for now. Yes, Sabha. Uh, Arnab, I just feel that, you know, this point that Mr. Sundaram is making is very interesting because yes, we have, we, it's not just about Jayalalita, this great personality who fascinates all of us. You have a, such a, uh, such an uh, important, significant, vital state in a crisis now because of this delayed uh, law. But the irony will be that you will find that she would have also sought the delay. Her lawyers would have also sought a delay. So, you know, but it's a, it's a message because we have to uh, say that the law can catch up with you if there was corruption on this scale. But look at the, it's also a shameful uh, statement on the law that you carry on and this woman today uh, is running the state very well by all accounts. She is, and her opponents are facing also huge corruption charges and now suddenly you have complete disarray and chaos in that state. So, you know, that is just that we do need to reflect on this 18 year long process. Arnab, one, th one other thing, if I may come in here. No, I, I completely agree with you. Only that, only that at this point of time, that's not the issue. At this point of time, the issue is uh, what are the political consequences? You know, the issue today is right now, what are the political consequences what of, of what, what has happened here right now? You see, the political consequences, Sabha and Nirja will agree with me, the political consequences will be what happens to the BJP ADMK relationship. The, you know, Jayalalita was the only opposition politician who Narendra Modi spared in his general election campaign of 2014. Will the BJP distance itself from the ADMK? More importantly, can the BJP distance itself from the IDMK given the fact that the BJP needs numbers in the Rajya Sabha, right? And, and, and there are political consequences of that. Can the BJP totally rule out a political alliance with the IDMK to make inroads into the Kader dominated political scenario in Tamil Nadu? You see, these are longer term factors that, are, that have to be looked at also. So why we are talking about Jayalalita and what happens to her is because whatever happens in Tamil Nadu has an immediate impact on national politics. Navika, what's happening at the UNG? How many more speakers before Mr. Modi comes on? From what we are being told uh, from inside uh, Ornob, about two more speakers to go before Narendra Modi uh, uh, speaks. Uh, but what we are uh, being told, Narendra Modi has arrived at the premises of the UNGA. He's uh, come in at around 9.35 local time, which is about 20 minutes ago. He has arrived at the UNGA and he is currently meeting uh, with the staff of UNGA. He's been given a tour of the UNGA uh, internally and has a meeting with Ban Ki-moon before he goes in to speak. So that meeting with Ban Ki-moon currently underway and that's the update that we are bringing you here from the UNGA headquarters in New York that right. Narendra Modi, Prime Minister Narendra Modi about 10-15 uh, minutes from now will address the UNGA and at the moment is in a meeting with Ban Ki-moon. Well, fantastic. So, you know, we, we'll, we'll see whether Narendra Modi takes up on the script where uh, on, on the issue of Kashmir because the whole meeting between Ban Ki-moon and Nawaz Sharif focused only and only on the issue, issue of Kashmir. Uh, we'll, we'll get an update from Bangalore in just a minute where we want to know the very latest of what is happening with Jayalalita. We'd heard the latest reports that Jayalalita is in the hospital within the jail campus, which is called the Prapanna Agraha. Inside the jail campus hospital, they are assessing her health condition, after which further uh, action will be taken. For our viewers who are joining us on that story, uh, you know, it, this, uh, there have been live updates through the entire uh, evening that we've been given you at about three minutes to five uh, Indian Standard Time. Jayalalita got the four-year prison term. Madhav, what's the latest from Bangalore? Well, yes, uh, Anna, but in fact, uh, as you were mentioning, Jalilta had complained of dizziness. Uh, she is someone who also suffers from diabetes. So, sir, clearly, of course, all of these aspects uh, were uh, put up uh, before the judge. So the judge said it is, of course, the jailers and the jail doctors who will have to take a call on that. So she was taken to the clinic in the jail. And after that, of course, another crucial aspect is, of course, the issue of her security. She is a VVIP protectee, and uh, the, it was that kind of security that was being demanded by her as in 
inside the jail as well. But inside the Bangalore jail, there is no such provision of a VVIP security. So she still, although she's inside the jail premises very much, she's in the office of the superintendent is what we've been told. So really, we'll have to be seen what options can be worked out. There's also medical that has to be done of Jailalta outside at one of the government hospitals. So a lot that is expected right through the evening as far as this is expected as well. And clearly, of course, the jail authorities will also have to take a call on where they can provide her adequate security and which kind of accommodation can be given to her if by chance she cannot be kept right here at the Parapana Agrahara Bangalore Central Jail. Okay, uh, keeping, keeping us on top of both stories, Madhav from Bangalore, Navika and Maru from the UNGA in New York. I'll be back with the news, uh, breaking news edition, taking a very short break for a couple of minutes.